Hello, everybody. Yeah, my name is Alexey Struhans. Dmitry offered to change the title, change tick to sick. We will talk about it as well today. Uh, does it work? Yep, it works. Fine. So I, I'm sorry I'm that old. I work for many organizations uh, and play different roles there, so I have many perspectives I want to share with you. We'll try to go somewhat sequentially through these things, like what it is like working in IT and what do we have to do to be successful there, and what opportunities do we have to become better at it. But it's somewhat fuzzy, we will be jumping from subject to subject all the time. If you want to ask something on the way, just raise your hands. I'll try to accept questions on the way. It will be more entertaining. I'll be asking you questions as well, so to make it more interactive, not like a traditional education. Again, when you're pouring in your brain some knowledge in chunks of one hour, 40 minutes, or something like this. So that's the first question to you. What do you think IT runs on? Is it, say, money? Who thinks money is a primary driver of IT field? Yeah, you raise your, just raise your hands if you think so. Yeah, well, not, not that much green in you, yeah? okay. Uh, what about software? Is software something that makes it run really? How do you think? Okay, then, then it's hardware, right? Hardware is what IT runs on. What else then? Lazy people. Lazy people. Why? Because people don't like to do things, so they make things to make other things easier. Yeah, they make things work for them. Not only. Yeah, my, my answer really is, it's you. Look in the mirror. You as employees, consumers, as businessmen, whoever, whoever you are or will become, is the reason why IT works and why it is working. That's the main topic for me now. Because of, I feel more and more that IT is about humans mostly. I'll try to bring this viewpoint to you, to share it with you somehow. Let's look at the environment we're working in. It's often like this. Still, despite the development of all the computer science knowledge, we still sometimes work in nights and whatever, and still don't succeed. First, because of again we're humans, we make mistakes. Education is supposedly about you learning on some other people's mistakes. You're lucky if you can do it. But again, if you're going to make a difference, you'll be making mistakes of your own of your own. It's inevitable. And you must welcome them. You must be glad there are your mistakes here for you to learn because if it's your opportunity to learn. Nobody else will make these mistakes in your place. And sometimes it's quite a sad situation. For me it happened once that I was working for a month on some feature. I designed it, coded it, I even wrote the 40 pages of documentation, something very uncharacteristic for me, but I did it. I was very proud of it, passed it to QA, and in two days we understood with testers that it has to be redone completely. I stretched the months of my life this way and learned a lesson. Just check very often whether you are doing the right thing. Do it more often than once a month. Still, it's inevitable we always will be losing some work because the world changes, it's not static. All we can do, we can just strive to reduce these losses as much as possible. Yeah. So don't be afraid of them, it happens anyway. And it takes a lot of stamina or if you heard about this 10,000 hours rule, some claim it's right, some claim it's wrong, but what I see all the time is Successful people are those who invest their time, who are persistent in trying to achieve something, in trying to learn something. So just be persistent. Yeah. Work on it. Indeed, our planning in IT project is a disaster, really. Disaster because of 
everything changes. Because if we cannot predict the future, we cannot know what are the obstacles we will encounter. If we do something new, and we always do something new, we hate repetitive work. So that's inevitable problem to me. Because of on the way, while you are solving a problem, your perception of this problem changes all the time. And the problem changes itself probably with the market, with the competitors, whatever. People around you, people who are working with you change. They come, leave, get married, make experiments, get new ideas, and all of this is boiling and changing all the time. And so does the environment you work in. Your programming languages, your systems you work on, organizations you work in, everything. Now, it's very exciting to me. It's very exciting field to work in. But don't expect it to be easy or painless. It's not the case. Sometimes it seems that there are some brilliant people who just do it in some ideal way. Like Steve Jobs. And when you try to research it and analyze it, you find out that it's a matter of continuous improvement. It's a matter of reflection on what have been done in the past. It's a matter of Again, persistent effort. For me, these things very nicely concentrate in uh, so-called agile, agile manifesto. This is what very clever people, very experienced people came to and agreed on and wrote for us, not that experienced and not that clever to follow. And you see, it's about individuals. It's about delivering value first, and value is the working software, not well, anything else, actually. Now, it's about collaboration, and it's about welcoming change. So that's, that, these are the principles we must try to base our careers on. And there are, of course, many, many challenges on the way. Like, there are often projects which are almost ready almost all the time. Like week into week, everybody is working frantically. It drives management, customer, and team crazy, but it's still not finished. But almost, it's almost finished. Yeah. It's like 99%, 99.9, 99 99.9999, but still not 100. Yeah. Sometimes we stop it and say, customers will understand and launch a buggy or a product. They won't understand. No way. We are lying to ourselves. That's hard to do otherwise because of we don't understand the problem. We don't understand the solution until we have built it. In any complex system, there is no model that can really express it but the software itself. And only after we have done it, we know how it should have been done. And then it takes courage, it takes time to redo it correctly. And most often we don't redo it. We are pressed by business to add new features, to sell more, and we are adding new features and making more and more and more <laughs> complex and more and more and more like a pile of garbage. And after some time your release takes so long that it's easier to scratch it off, throw out the system, start over, because of it will be faster than to release a new feature. That's a set point in time, in, in life of project. So, you must exercise discipline. You must exercise discipline to not to allow such things happen. You must have some long-term vision and strive for uh, long-term sustainability of what you're doing. That's very important. Or you can be jumping from project to project, staying in each of them like three months, but nobody likes such people. Another point for discipline, it isn't something I like very much. It's very painful, like training like this is really painful. But you must exercise. Uh, discipline is necessary because of our world is more and more dependent on IT. 
If in this building main router stops, half of country will fill it. They won't be able to make their payments. So easy. So it's really important. And sometimes failure of some fairly simple IT object can cause loss of people's lives. And more and more it grows around us. We don't see it, but in future, when you will be growing up and getting your jobs and doing something yourselves, there will be more and more points in which fragility of IT might mean real problems for people. So you must be even more disciplined than that. And there is such thing as evolution of simplicity now. It's often very easy to do very complex things with just a click of a button. And it works perfectly. Your mother probably knows how to burn a CD or even something else more complex. Though she doesn't know how it really happens there inside. But if this button click doesn't do exactly what you want or suddenly stops working, then you're looking into an abyss of complexity of unknown, you must explore and understand. And I ask you not to give up at this point. Go and explore it, research, and tame this complexity for your purpose. That's how you should behave. You remember Google saying something about not being evil? Actually, it's also a problem, an ethical problem of today's world that first there are many companies around you who are after your confidential data, who want very much and pray every day to get control over everything you do on your computers, laptops, tablets and phones. And only thing protecting you is a tiny bit of legislation somewhere. They want to get rid of, but they can't yet. Yeah, but they will find a way from because we are giving up our rights ourselves. We are buying these phones, we are signing up for these services, we are clicking agree on confidentiality agreements nobody reads. That's a problem. Another evil here is the fact that Again, because of this fragility of IT, nowadays just a couple of evil hackers can make more devastating catastrophe than, say, a thousand soldier army. It's quite easy, you just have to break into some nice object like a nuclear station. This is your future as well. Uh, so, I have talked a little bit already about what, what are the virtues or merits you shall have, qualities you shall have to succeed in this world or even to make this world succeed with you, not fail entirely. Let's say some more about them. This is what we do in our work. We are learning new things, we're processing information, uh, we're all the time inventing some solutions and we're communicating a lot with, it, with, with each other. And we're taking responsibility in making decisions because you have to make decisions. And you must learn somehow to do it better. You see, there's no word about programming. But actually, I think when Alexis was talking about programming, he meant also all these things. Because the programming isn't only knowing the language. Knowing the language, you can just read a book and then you know it. So what? And you are or you will be the stars who will be doing it. I wish to. So, tell me what's, what's important. It, it's a hint. What's, what's important for software developer, because we are software developers, we are talking mostly from software developer perspective, of course. What is necessary to do? What, what are the qualities you shall possess 
to be successful. Mm -hmm. Communication. Communication, right. Very good. What else? Mm -hmm. Courage. Courage. Very good. Yep. It it takes courage. It takes courage to make decisions. Teamwork. Teamwork. Yeah. Collaboration. Yeah. Working together. And I would say lifelong learning. Because of the environment changes so quickly, you have to learn all the way. Probably in ten years you will have some professions nobody teaches now. There is no such program in university. Because the world changes so quickly. Now, you, you have to learn all the time to stay current in this. I work in the bank most of my working time. And uh, I have such an employer representative perspective. About 10% of my employees, by the way, in my department are undergrad students. They haven't finished the institute yet, but they're working and working very successful, which is a, which I like about them. It's interesting to think about how, how do we select them? What, what are the qualities you shall have again to be hired, say, at the second year of your studies? Because if it's it's normal for me, yeah. It's if you are studying four years in a row, not doing it very seriously, and still do not work. Then yes, what what are you doing all the time? Partying, really? Playing World of Warcraft. Huh? Playing World of Warcraft. <laughs> it counts as partying to me. <laughs> Just ritually. <laughs> yeah, really. Okay. So, basically what, what we value is people who <coughs> seek pride in what they're doing. Who are doing things in a way that makes him like it, makes them like it. Who are, in this sense, professional. They probably don't know much yet. But still, they are responsible for what they do, and they take this responsibility. There was a question about junior developer getting boring tasks. Actually, I'm probably very lucky because I have very, very nice colleagues and very nice management. We understand each other, and how it happens with us. It's like if you can do something, you're getting more and more responsibility all the time. A little bit more than it's comfortable for you. Because then you grow, if it is a little bit uncomfortable. And this way, say, a guy who is just finishing his bachelor this year is already responsible for some important subsystems and working alone with them and with customers. And it's, it's totally okay. It's not a problem. It's, matter of, it's more a matter of your personal attitude of this attitude when you behave like a professional. I hope everybody have heard about it works on my machine. Uh, in Soviet times it was about buttons. Yeah, probably somebody remembers it. This this is about sense of ownership, about your sense of responsibility. If you're just doing what you're being told to do and don't care about the end result for the company, then you make no sense. You can be exchanged with any <coughs> other person on the planet. It will make no difference. If you look into some higher goal, let me give an example. It's, if you know about Toyota model, they have such person as a chief engineer. It's somebody who started 20 years ago as just floor engineer in a factory, have grown up through all these layers and now knows perfectly how the product is being built. 
And now he takes, uh, say, two months' time to drive in different cars, in different locations, in different weather, through the country, and learn more about what people feel driving cars. Gets back, and then all this knowledge comes together, his technical knowledge and excellence, and knowledge about what customer needs, knowledge about uh, company goals, all this comes together to produce a brilliant product. And again, each of you is capable of doing it at his own level. Yeah. I don't urge all of you to become Steve Jobs. No. I will have no employees then, you know. But still, strive to. At least try. It. And again, it's teamwork. Because in the modern world, nobody or almost nobody, virtually nobody, can create a product alone. It's more about lots of people doing something together. Each of them having his own or her own specialization of the world. And sometimes I encounter people like this, who just follow the tide and don't put in any effort into learning something. It's not very interesting to work with them, you know. And again, I'm trying to choose interesting ways. Of course, I expect from a programmer to know all the way through from algorithms and compilers through virtual machine operating system and hardware it's working on, at least to be capable of understanding. Because of you must, you must have this kind of deep, at least basic knowledge. At the same time, however, your knowledge has to be wide. Because it grows more and more uh, nowadays that there are different people doing different things and like programmers and network administrators not understanding each other very well. And often if there is a problem somewhere between these disciplines, like your TCP IP stack behaving uh, in some weird way when application does something, it takes many people and many different expertises to solve it. So you must be able to communicate with your peers. Actually, because of this volume of technical knowledge grows so fast, you must follow it somehow. You cannot digest it all, it's impossible. But you must be capable. There are also some things that do not change that fast, like organizing your work. I'm saying it's a nice book, but somewhat lengthy. I haven't read it, I just get some uh, shortened version of it. This one I liked, however, because it's wider. It's about your collaboration with other people. It's about sharpening the soul and getting this sustainability we all need as human creatures. It's about you growing person. So what, what are other learning opportunities you have? I will not tell about everything, and I have already told about some of them. So let's, let's look at it. It's communities. Yeah, you're welcome to join them. It's your opportunity to share your experiences and to get others' experiences shared with you. To know something and know somebody. To know somebody you can ask in the case you need some particular information. Since I do most for Agile Latvia and LDM, Latvian Developers Network, I like them more. That's natural. We are quite big, like 600 and 200 people, respectively. In the Jai Latvia, we have organized a couple of conferences, really big conferences, like 200 people, attracting speakers from Nordics, among them very, very renowned people like Jurgen Appelo or Joachim, uh, uh, which who brought workshops and. Uh, 
presentations on most recent topics in their working lives, who share their experiences, which they recently acquired, which is very good. Yeah, we brought Yandex here with the Lightning Developers Network. It was also fun as well. Also a big company. Uh, we are trying to do meetups quite often. Now we are running a series of user stories workshops. So if you are interested, just come and join us and see how it happens. It's free and mostly painless. Uh, at Latin Developers Network, I say Stallworlds, we will have Android workshop. We have also done some code retreats and coding dodges before then. And actually, I like coding retreats. Retreat means, in this case, we are getting together to do some code, to do some programming. In an environment somewhat relaxed compared to your normal work, because if you have no deadlines, you, have, you don't have to worry about your wage. You just try to do the code in the most perfect way you can think of. Moreover, you do it in a pair with some peers of you who have different experiences, different knowledge, and you're creating something totally new together. Something you, haven't, you wouldn't come up with you alone. That's a great experience. And we'll have a big conference in September. September 13th, 13th, it's easy to remember. Basically for everybody. We will try to get together people of different fields of work and let them communicate. Let them make an event that will be useful for them. This is what we are working on now. Alex, I have told about online courses and speak of program masters this is these are people who gave me a kickstart in my career after spending there several years i started my work as a programmer and basically needed no higher education in about 10 years it took 17 years for me to get bachelor oh. <laughs> i didn't feel I needed before. <laughs> but again, it's about people starting programming at age 12, 14. You look a little bit older here. Now you can recommend it to your you know, friends and children. We also run these Java Guru courses, which I like because of it was born like an alternative to academic stuff, actually. What happens there, it's people who work as developers in quite known companies in this semester. These were people from Otaklasniki, from my bank, and from Citicon, who aren't only professionals in their fields. They are also people who love and can share this knowledge who can in inspire others. This is what I like in them. This is why I like working with them. And so far it's quite successful. We will be doing Java 1 and Java 3 courses in June, August. So if you want to learn object-oriented programming in Java or deepen your knowledge of Java and say, get ready for certification of certified uh, programmer, you're welcome. We are also doing courses on some specific subjects. And we plan to run Android Group on July, August as well. Alex says actually will be the one winning it. If you liked him, you might like his Android course as well. When I started learning Android, together with him actually, um, I thought initially it, it should be quite an easy thing. What, what can be there? It's just programming for mobile phones. I can program, so mobile phones shall not be that complex. It appeared wrong. First three weeks we spent with a, without programming any single line of code. We were digging through some XML configurations, screen densities and things like this. So it's, it's really a complex thing. You can get a flavor of it coming to our workshop uh, in June actually then you will 
feel what it is about. Okay, another interesting experience we had was Erasmus intensive programs. Who has participated in such a programs? Raise your hands, please. Okay, then I, I, I will tell it. Yeah. I don't have to be sorry for those who have seen it. Uh, these are things a higher education institution shall engage in. So basically ask at your institute or university if they do some of these programs. <coughs> it usually happens like a bunch of universities from all over the Europe decide that they want to do such a project, such a program together. We have participated in two. One was Promont, it was devoted to programming Android applications. And another one was, had a broader topic, it was about open source systems as such. In each of them, we have tried to simulate somewhat ideal conditions of a European company project. Imagine there are people from different countries coming together, not knowing each other yet. They have to speak English, though not, none of them has English as their mother tongue. And they have to do something working, have to produce something working in just two weeks. Given they have different levels of knowledge, different education, different experience, they have to come up with a solution somehow to organize it, uh, themselves. It's very intense and gratifying to work for those who have been through it. It makes you understand you can do much more than just, say, uh, labs in your institute. There were two projects I liked very much, projects by Latvian students, started by Latvian students. You can look at them more. I hope the presentations will be linked on the site. iCubes is about controlling virtual objects with some physical objects. Like, we were inspired by Kinect, actually, at that time. Uh, so, but we don't have, we, we haven't had Kinects, and we haven't had that sophisticated software and time to develop it, so we, we started with somewhat simple. We developed it such cubes moving which you can move some objects in the virtual world and develop it as, uh, several virtual worlds for it. And it was quite a fun. Another one was about very cheap interactive whiteboard. Basically, you have seen probably interactive whiteboards somewhere. Yeah, it's very costly thing, like several thousands of euro probably, with special pens and special everything. What we did there was we just pointed a beamer on a whiteboard, a normal plain whiteboard, and were recognizing what people are drawing there. And there was even a menu shown, you can tap with your hands. So basically, that's a matter for a startup. Probably we can develop it further and sell to somebody. It seems like a very nice idea. So again, as I said, it's many universities coming together to do something. And then people organizing their work somehow. Deciding what has to be done, who is doing what, and in which order. And it means your responsibility towards your team members. You feel it. The total work depends on you doing your piece of work. It means you must agree something on how the system will be structured and how you will proceed. It means you will learn more than in usual lectures. Because of each of you is choosing what he is doing or she is doing. And investigating the field herself and learning on the way. And learning to learn. Learning to formulate the problem. Because of sometimes it's even hard to formulate the problem we're going to solve. And in the end, you have feeling of achievement. Feeling of doing something, of you have done something great together with others, which is great. <laughs> you ask no questions on the way, right?
Was it too fast? No, it's okay. I think maybe now questions will arise. Yep. Um, those courses you mentioned and the meetups, they are more focused towards uh, professional knowledge like programming and stuff. How would you, what would be your advice to improve your social skills and communication and the organizing of time? Um, there is a Toastmasters Facebook, Facebook group in uh, Riga, I guess. You can join them, it will help you work on your presentation skills. Probably you know better. I haven't been there anyway. But okay, so Yevgeny knows. Uh, that's one thing. Another, getting together with other people automatically will improve your social skills. It's inevitable. Uh, speaking of our say programming courses, the Java second semester actually is devoted to building projects in groups like this uh, Erasmus intensive program experience but on somewhat smaller scale without these international aspects of it. But again, it's say four persons trying to develop something working in a new technology, learning technology on the way, but also learning how to structure the project, how to structure their work, and how to collaborate. This, this is how we try to cover it. And again, probably there are more just more social things there. Say um, the meetups of information system of business analysts. Uh, they are more social than of programmers, of course. More questions? Oh, um, as far as I know, you are also a teacher in uh, yep. um, yeah. <laughs> So, what exactly was your motivation for doing that? Why did you decide to become a teacher? I hope we can make the world a little better place to live in. That's the, basically the only motivation you should have, I would say. Do you feel that you are successful in that? Somewhat. It could be better, but something happens. See you're here. That's good.